ready. All right, J.D. Kronitz will be our next speaker, and he will talk about using GIS to identify and characterize horizontal curvature. J.D. has worked as a consultant for more than 25 years, serving clients in scientific, environmental, and transportation and manufacturing industries. For the past 15 years, he's been primarily focused on GIS software applications for transportation, he works closely with the uh, Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, and he also teaches in Penn State's online geospatial program. Good afternoon. Uh, today I have the pleasure of talking to you briefly about some work I did using GIS to identify horizontal curvature in roadways. This works, I guess, right? Okay. So, Curves, uh, as one might guess, are an important feature of roadways when it comes to highway safety. Surprisingly, many state DOTs, Departments of Transportation, don't have good inventories of their roadway curves. <clears throat> Often, if they have curvature information, it's embedded on engineering diagrams or other plans and really not in a, in a format that is readily accessible for highway safety analysis. So in this project, I basically focused on trying to extract that information and producing a inventory of Pennsylvania's horizontal curves from roadway centerline data, which is data that all state DOTs have. Now, it's a priority of uh, state DOTs to make sure that their roads are safe and to constantly try and improve safety. Um, <clears throat> Generally, what they're trying to do is they're trying to use a limited amount of safety dollars to apply to those roads that would best benefit, where they can make the biggest impact and get the biggest bang for the buck. The question is, how do, ident how do they identify their priorities? And there's really two different ways you can approach the problem. The first is by doing crash analysis. So states all have good data on their crashes. And you can use the crash data to identify areas where there are high crash rates and in that manner identify your priority sections of roadway. That's a reactive approach. And it may be erroneous because it could just be an anomaly. It might not really represent an area of roadway that inherently has safety issues. The other approach is to do a systemic analysis of the roadways, where you're looking at the characteristics of the roadways and you're calculating expected crash rates on features of the roadway, such as curvature features. Either way, once you identify the priority sections of roadway you want to address and improve safety on, you can implement any one of many, many countermeasures or safety improvements. So here I've just shown a few, and there, there are, I could probably put together a hundred. Uh, but for example, centerline rumble strips, uh, high friction surface treatments are just a couple. Okay, so before I get into what, what approach I used, uh, just a little bit on the geometry of a horizontal curve. And this is kind of uh, a complex figure, but really all we're interested in are three parameters when it comes to horizontal curves. We're interested in, oops, sorry about that. We're interested in the radius of the curve. I don't know if you can see that. We're interested in the length of the curve. And we're interested in the central angle of the curve, the number of degrees through which curve turns. So those are the three parameters we're interested in. And given any two of those parameters, we can derive the third. So the approach that I used uh, is I started with roadway centerline data for Pennsylvania. And I basically took each road feature and uh, deconstructed it into its ordered series of vertices, which is essentially what it represents. And then for each pair of vertices, I determined the straight line went through those vertices and determined the bearing angle, the angle between that straight line and the positive x-axis, the bearing angle. And then I continued to do that for each pair of ordered vertices in sequence, basically looking at how that bearing angle changed. And any time the change in bearing angle exceeded a certain threshold of value, I threw up a flag and said, we're in a curve. And so that's how we identify the start of a curve, continue in that process, stepping through the vertices, and when we get to the point that we drop below the threshold value, we know the curve ended. 
and by aggregating the change in bearing angle, we can calculate the central angle of the curve. We can calculate the length, and from those two, we can derive the radius. Again, if we had more time to get a little bit into a little bit more detail on what the approach was, but at the end of the day, by using this this technique, we can establish curve features that have attributes of radius, central angle, length, etc. Now, to do this type of process manually would be, would be extremely time-consuming. Uh, so, I derived a or I, I created a program in Python, implemented that as a custom toolbox in ArcGIS, uh, and named it Curve Detective, and essentially automates that algorithm I just kind of walked you through. So, here's an example of the output of that tool. You can see superimposed or layered on top of the roadway network, we have this new curve feature class that this tool created. Each curve in red labeled according to its central angle and radius. I then went ahead and, and processed, once I had established it worked okay, I went ahead and processed all the state roadway in Pennsylvania. So in, in Pennsylvania, the state actually owns roughly 45,000 45, miles of roadway. There's a lot more roadway in Pennsylvania that's local roads but the state actually owns and maintains about 45,000 miles of roadway. In order to process this roadway, it took the tool about two hours, and it ultimately identified 170,000 or so horizontal curves. Then I went ahead and I, I wanted to make sure that the output of the tool was legitimate, that it was accurate and precise. So I went ahead and uh, found locations that had been surveyed in the field and presumably had good data on the curves, and then compared those engineering diagrams, which is where that data is embedded, to the results of the curve detective. And without getting any, into any great detail, I found that the, the tool was very accurate and reasonably precise. Okay, so at this point I had identified or created an inventory of horizontal curves in Pennsylvania, and I wanted to basically see what, what could I learn by using the crash data that we have in Pennsylvania and kind of combining the two, just to see how crash rates, for example, differ on curves. And I, I created a little tool in Microsoft Access where I brought these two data sets together that allowed me to perform a bunch of analyses. And I did conduct a number of analyses. I'll just walk you through a couple briefly. So in the first one, I basically just looked at all the, all the road sections in Pennsylvania that have a horizontal curve based on the, the output of the curve detected. And I looked at the number of crashes or the crash rates on those sections of roadway and compared them to crash rates on straight sections of roadway. And what I found is that on curves, uh, the crash rate is about 2.3 times higher than on straight sections of roadway. I then went ahead and, and limited the crash I was looking at just to crashes that involved fatalities. And when we just limit it to fatal crashes, we see that the crash rate is 2.8 times higher on curved sections of roadway as it is on straight sections of roadway. So not only are crashes more frequent on curves, they're generally more serious. I also looked at, I wanted to see the relationship between the central angle of the curve and the radius of the curve and the crash rate. So I ran a series of analyses uh, at various central angles, various radii, and what I saw was that there was little or no relationship between central angle and crash rate, which was kind of intuitively surprising to me. But there was a very strong relationship between radius and crash rate. So as the radius of the curve got smaller, especially as it, got, it went below 1,000 feet in radius, the crash rate dramatically increased. So on the vertical axis there, we have crash rate. On the horizontal axis, we have radius. And so you can see as the radius decreases, the crash rate shoots up. Each data series here corresponds to a, a different central angle. And you can see there's really no discernible um, relationship there. So in conclusion, uh, this is a technique that can be implemented by, implemented by any state DOT, because state DOTs all have uh, highway center line, roadway center line data. It's a technique that's very rapid, it's cost effective, and it can produce a highly accurate and precise inventory of a state's 
horizontal curves. In looking at the Pennsylvania crash data in conjunction with these, this horizontal curve data, we saw that the crash rates on, on, on curved sections of roadway are a lot higher than they are on straight sections of roadway. And in addition, for, for crash, the crashes that do occur on curves, they tend to be much more serious or fatal uh, more frequently than they are on straight sections of roadway. And with that, I will thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to take them.